We get so focused on the door closing that we don't see the very doors that are being opened because that door had to be closed. Some tears, some stress, but I come my blessings. Hey everyone and welcome back or to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I love making videos like this one, but I also do travel vlogs, fashion, morning routines, etc. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I hope you subscribe, become part of the family. But without further ado, let's just get into today's video. So number one, before we get started, you know, I like to take a time to just pray, really set the intentions for the Holy Spirit to come into this atmosphere and that this video can reach the right audience, reach the right people that need to hear this and that it be receptive and most importantly, able to be used in um, those people's lives that need to hear this. So if you can, close your, close your eyes, bow your head, but if not, no worries, just listen, okay? Holy Spirit, I invite you into this presence. I invite you into this space right now that this video is going to be reached to the right audience, that the right people that need to hear this, God will hear it. Reminders that they know that you have them, God. You know the plans for their lives. You know the desires of their hearts, God. Most importantly, in what is meant to be that is of your will, it shall be done, God. It is already done. So I pray right now, God, that the right people will come to this video. The right people will be able to hear your message, God, because I am just a vessel of you. This is your platform. This is your word, God. And so I just pray right now that it is going to be reached to the right people. And most importantly, that they'll be able to use it moving forward in their everyday lives, trusting you more, growing deeper in your word and in your and in relationships with you, God. In my right name, I pray all these things. Amen. Okay, so without further ado, let's just get right into today's video. What did I want to talk about? So I want to talk about what to do when God says no. What to do when it feels like all the doors you thought you were supposed to walk into, you thought were open, begin to close. And it feels so heavy and you're just so confused and you're so unsure what to do in these tough moments, okay? So as always, I like to start off with a little bit of a back story, if you will, because my videos, as much as I would sit here and say that, oh, it's just to help other people, which that is the goal to help others. Also, it's me taking my own advice. It's me having to go through certain things and experience them and then learn things I now know. And so making videos, I do it to help others, but I also do it to look back on, to watch, to see where God has brought me, where God has transformed me, to remind me that if he did it before, he can do it again. And again, you know, just to like kind of take my own advice, not just give it, but take it. So I was recently in a situation where God had closed some doors that I thought I thought I was walking into. I was getting really excited. I'm like, okay, okay. And I was like, nope, nope. So if you don't know, I'm in the Air Force and I will hit five years in September, which that seems crazy that it's been almost five years and so i signed a six-year contract which means your girl is almost at the end of her enlistment okay and i had a lot of things to think about like do i want to re-enlist for like a four year or a six year or do i want to um get out or maybe do you even want to just extend because you do have the opportunity um after your first enlistment that you can extend um as just like a first term airman and so it doesn't have to be a full enlistment it could be just for a year or for two years if you know you may feel like okay i need a little more time but i don't want to commit to a full four years you can do like a one or two year um, enlistment so you know i'm trying to figure out all these things like what do i want to do right and but I'm also in a place where I'm not happy with my job. Okay, y'all, like, to be honest, I'm not extremely happy. My job isn't a job that's like, oh my gosh, I have horrible leadership. And I have, like, too many things on my plate. It can get stressful, just like any job can. But I am blessed that I do have more help now. And I have amazing leadership. Do I disagree with them at times? Of course, you know, you know that, right? But for the most part, like... It's not even those things. It's just that I don't feel a type of like I'm in my purpose, you know, a type of like passion, a type of drive. So, you know, um, 
while I'm trying to navigate, okay, am I going to stay in the Air Force? I'm going to get out. I'm also dealing with the fact that, like, it's not my passion, you know? But I'm just trusting God. I'm, like, giving God my career. You know, I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to give it to you. Are you going to help me? So fast forward. Um, fast forward, I get an assignment, right? And so pretty much with this assignment, I would be moving to England, okay? I was super excited because if you know me personally you know that i've been wanting to move to europe it's been something that's just kind of been like on my to do it's just a goal of mine to live in another country and it would be just put me in europe you know and I'll, I'll figure it out from there so when i got to when i got this assignment that was telling me i was going to move to england i was girl i was ecstatic i'm like oh perfect i could be you know in england i'm gonna be close to paris i'm gonna be close to london i'm close to italy and all these places are known for fashion which is something i really want to pursue so okay we're back had a couple technical difficulties but we're back so as i was saying i'm super excited right because i'm gonna be in these amazing or close to these amazing cities you know paris london italy and so it's like, okay, yeah, it's a bit of a sacrifice because I will be still doing Air Force things. But it's like, girl, you're going to be in the hub of so many fashion places, you know? So I was willing to make sacrifice because this would be a move on Air Force Dime and I'll be, in these, I'll be close to these amazing cities. So I'm feeling good. I'm starting to like, you know, get my stuff together. Just get ready for this move when I get the notification that my assignment has been canceled. And I'm like okay god <laughs> what does mean what does mean you know so my assignment get canceled and my leadership is super great they were doing everything in their power to get it turned back on trying to you know figure out okay what can we do things like that but ultimately it just did not happen that way and it's another sign that if it was meant to it would have and so it was kind of again Okay, guy, you, you really don't want this door to be open because uh, you're not, it's not budging. It's not budging. As much as I'm trying to get the key and go, it's, it's not budging, right? So the assignment got canceled. I was, of course, devastated, navigating those feelings like, okay, God, well, what's next, right? Fast forward a couple weeks, maybe even like a month later, we now get the promotion numbers. So I was preparing the test to make the next rank because in the Air Force or any branch, you have to, you know, constantly test. Um, well, I don't know each branch. Maybe they're different. I know for the Air Force, especially active duty, you have to like test to get to the next rank. Um, so anyways, the numbers are now coming out, the list coming out for who made it. And I'm getting excited. I'm like, okay, I've been studying, like, you know, let's see. Let's see what's up. And I see my numbers and I missed it. I missed it, y'all, by four points, okay? Four, four points, yeah. So I'm even more, like, you know, devastated. Like, okay, God, what, what's going on? Because I'm thinking to myself, like, I was willing to stay in the Air Force, you know, I got that assignment. I, I really thought, you know, that you was telling me, like, to stay in the Air Force, you know, that there was things I needed to continue to do. So I'm, I'm like, well, what, what's going on? Because it's even as if that's not your plan or maybe it was never your plan, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, again, um, we can think that, like, oh, this is what God wants. This is God's plan. It's like, God's looking at us like, girl, I never co-signed that. I never said that. And so, in a sense, it kind of, like, humbled me because I was so sure once I got that assignment notification that, like, okay, yeah, God is calling me to stay in the Air Force. He's calling me to stay in the Air Force. I'm going to stay. You know, I'm going to do my little extra two years so I could be in Europe. And, you know, I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to get this promotion. Like, I was starting to kind of, like, make my own plans. You know, getting real, real in my own flesh, right? Until those doors was closed. And it woke me up to realizing uh, these are not god plans girl these are the plans you made you know and so my first number one point that i want to talk about is when you know you're in a season where it seems like the doors are just closing one after another and you're not sure you're not you don't know why as cliche as it may sound pray i know i know that's gonna sound super cliche but as basic and as cliche as it is it's the truth Pray. Get his God, get in God's word and you know, really seek what God is calling you to do in this next chapter, in this next season. And so when I got into prayer, God revealed so much to me. It's almost like all I could do was just laugh because I'm like, God, 
God, you you real funny, you know? And so I'm in prayer one day, right? I'm doing my daily devotions as I always do. And I'm on the Bible app. Highly, highly recommend getting the Bible app. But I'm in I'm in the Bible app and um today's verse of the day, well, that day. Um that day, the verse of the day was Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. And it reads, I'm gonna read from the message translation because that's typically you know the one my phone is on, but it reads, We plan the way we want to live, but only God makes us able to live it. I was like, Ooh, once again, God, you funny, you funny. And so that was the rest of the day. And following that, there was a woman who who was talking about how this verse really came to her in a time where she needs to hear it, how she was able to relate to it. So long story short, she received an opportunity to work on this project, a project she had been wanting to work on for a very long time. So she was excited. She was excited to go and work on this project. Unfortunately, a week before she was scheduled to leave, it got canceled. Okay, literally one week. With that being canceled, it opened up her schedule. So now she had a lot of more time on her hands than she would if she was going to be doing the project. So she went back home, which was South Africa, and she was able to spend time with her family. And it just so happened that that same month, it was her younger sister's birthday. And so she was able to spend that with her sister. Now, her sister does have special needs, so her sister was not able to take care of herself on her own. She needed her family. And um, unfortunately, it was going to be her sister's last earthly birthday. She soon would pass after that birthday. Fast forward a year later, she gets a phone call. The project is now back on and it's going to be filmed on the same day as her sister's first heavenly birthday. Like what and while of course you know she talks about like it's devastating when a door closed that you're so excited to walk into i mean here she was literally a week before she was scheduled to leave and work on this project now being told oh nope it's canceled like that's a hard thing to hear but i'm pretty sure if you would have asked her if she would have rather spent the last you know earthly birthday with her sister or film this project i'm pretty sure she would have taken option one you know because that's such a precious moment that we can't get back no matter you know what we think that we can do like you can't get that back you can't get time back with people and so it really humbled me and it really made me realize like okay here i am and i could be so focused on man why was this door closed man i really wanted that man i really wanted this but taking time to allow for me to really get in prayer and to trust God, which is my second point. Trust God. When these doors close and it seems so heavy, it seems so like burdensome because you don't know why and it's so confusing. That's when we should trust and lean on him so much more. Because once again, back to that story, while in the moment, of course, when she received that news, it was devastating as any of us would say or would feel. But again if she had that option i'm pretty sure she would have done it all over again to have that assignment or not assignment <laughs> that's me to have that project be canceled so she could spend that time with her sister and you know it made me think okay i don't know why and i don't have all the answers right now but i know sooner than later i'm going to look back on this time and i'm going to say thank you god for closing that door because if that door wasn't closed i wouldn't have received i wouldn't have experience and things that i experienced because of it being closed sometimes we need to start shouting for the doors being closed because there are going to be the reason our certain doors get open and again we can get so focused on the door closing that we don't see the very doors that are being open because that door had to be closed you know i hope that that resonates with some people sometimes we have to remember that the very door we want to cry over and be devastated that closed is the very door that allowed other doors to be open bigger and better doors you know what i'm saying and so that was just like a reminder for me that was something for me to sit on to really know like yeah we plan but god has the final say and we must remember that we also know a famous uh verse which is jeremiah 29 11 is plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope in the future you know you can go on and read that whole chapter it's a beautiful chapter but just to highlight that um verse for a second which is so beautiful you know like we can think okay god like 
you close that door it must be the harm you know because it feels so devastating you know when you have a parent say no to a child they're gonna be crying they're gonna be like no i didn't know but they don't know their parent is protecting them they can't see their parent is not doing this to harm them but to actually help them and so we must have that same revenue when it comes to our father in heaven to know okay god isn't telling me no because he wants to harm me god's not telling me no because he just wants me to live a bad life but he's telling me no because he has something better. He's telling me no for my protection. He's telling me no so that I can receive the things that he wants me to receive, the things that he has in store that is so much better. And here's the thing too, sometimes we can be so quick to settle. Mm, we can be so quick to settle for what we think is good and it's not of God and it's not his best. And when we really surrender and we trust him, we can see, oh wow, I was really settling. Because the truth is, as I mentioned before, the Air Force was not my passion, okay? I love the Air Force and I am extremely grateful for everything the Air Force has given me. Don't get me wrong. I have so many benefits. I've traveled. I've met some amazing people that I'm still, you know, be in contact with beyond the Air Force. But overall, these last two years, to be honest, my job has not been a passion of mine. I have not, you know, really been feeling like i'm living in my purpose i will be honest with you and that's the harsh truth and it's like how long are we gonna settle for comfort comfortability and what's easy before we really trust god and we go after things that we desire we go after things we really want you know and so if i would have had that assignment especially if i would have made you know the next rank I would have stayed in. I would have got comfortable and I'd be like, okay, let me stay in. I need to, you know, do another year, another two years. But those two years could have turned into four more years. And then next thing you know, six more years. Because, you know, once you hit a certain time, people are like, well, just stay in. You're almost at the 20. And you can get trapped. You can get trapped very quickly into staying in, doing something that you really don't want to do. I was recently watching this movie on Netflix. And this was like feeling like, another sign another confirmation but to sum this movie up basically this man life went on super speed okay he was at this gravesite um talking to his dad and this woman comes up to him and she's like um they start talking and she pretty much says like yeah you seem like you are a man that puts a lot of things off you keep saying oh i'll get to it or you know later and she was like i'm gonna i want to give you a wedding gift and he's like what he's like my wedding isn't until he's like no i want to give you a wedding gift so she pretty much gives him this wedding gift girl that makes his life goes by extremely fast so what would you know be one year is blanked in a second he goes to sleep wakes up it's another year goes to sleep wake up it's another year his life begins to move by extremely fast years turns into seconds that he's just now going and a lot of things happen that he can't get back and he meets the lady and she tells him like you know your life didn't happen because it wasn't planned those things that happened as unfortunately as they were it was always going to happen it was always inevitable but it just went by super fast so it felt like you didn't have any grasp on on it she tells him that the gift she gave him um which was like this tin can was what he needed to like open up to stop the time and go back to you know the year so he opens this tin can and immediately, immediately when he's like back into the presence, right? He's not like 10 years older. He's back in the present. He's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, he's feeling so relieved. Like, oh my gosh, like I'm back. You know, I have my time back. He's happy. The first thing he do, the first thing he do is book a honeymoon because in the movie, as the time is just going by, it's feeling like seconds. He never booked honeymoon and the wife is agitated. She's like, You've been saying you're gonna book this honeymoon since we've been married and you never booked it. So now that he's back into like the you know present time with his um wife, they just got married. He's like, let me book this honeymoon right now because I do not want to put this off any longer. And then the second thing he do after that is he calls his job and he's like, Hey, I quit. And his wife is like, wait, 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 like we we can't afford, you know, 
my income alone right now. Like, we, we actually need you to keep the job. So he tells the boss, he's like, okay, I don't quit right now, but I am taking shorter days and I'm not working overtime and I'm going to be taking paid leave immediately. And he's like, and when I do find a job that can, you know, uh, meet my way of living, you know, it's financially stable, I'm quitting, right? And then after he calls his job, he calls his best friend. He's like, man, I love you. Like, you know? And so it just brought into perspective, like, what will we do if, like, the next 10 years of our lives just flew by, you know? Um, how we feel? What would we want? And it made me really think, like, okay, if I was to continue to live the life that I'm living right now, and the next 10 years, next even five years, even two years, would I be happy? Like, would I truly be happy? Because, again, in the movie, she tells him, like, the things that happened was inevitable. The only difference is you just wasn't really in them. So it seemed like it went by super fast. And so that was another thing for me to, like, humble me. It's like, if I continue the life I'm living right now, it does not mean that the things that happen are not going to happen. But would I be happy that they did? Hopefully this is making sense. I highly recommend that movie. Um, and I'll try to put the name below. But pretty much, long story short, I was like, you know what? Life is really too short. Life is too short to be doing things that you don't really like, but you're doing them because it's giving you comfort. You know, here this man was, he, he, he was in this job, right? You know, and he was working this job and he was thinking to himself, like, I need to stay at this job because it's providing for my family. But the very job that he was staying at to provide for his family was the very job that wound up costing him his family because as he was going through these years right he noticed that like his wife was telling him like all you do is spend time at work i'm tired of it you know his even daughter was like i just wish i had more time with you you know he's like well he's asking her all the things she want and she's like i just wish i had more time with you right time we don't realize time is so so valuable you could be here one day and then go on the next day right so we must not waste it because unfortunately like i said again a year could turn into two years and then two years four years next thing you know it's been 10 years are you really happy with the life you're living does it really give you joy do you really feel like you're in alignment with what god has for you what god word is and so again that movie was just confirmation and made me realize like while at the time when these doors was closing you know i didn't get the assignment i didn't get the rank it felt so overwhelming but the truth is, if I got those things, I would have stayed. I would have stayed in a comfortable life that really didn't make, make me happy. That didn't really give me joy. That didn't really, like, fill my cup. That I didn't feel like I was in purpose with. But I was going to stay because, oh, well, it's stable. Oh, well, it's comforting. Oh, well, it gave me this benefit. But it's like, are those benefits worth your peace? Which brings me to my third point, get into godly communities. I began to talk to my best friend who is pretty much my sister and I'm telling her you know the things that I'm going through and she she asked me the question she's like okay Ashley the benefits you're telling me the Air Force offer you she's like is those benefits worth your happiness she's like is those benefits worth the things you really want to do and she knows me better than like anybody you know and it made me think like it's not it's not and you know praying with her really because she's again she's my best friend she knows all my like goals and things i want to do it made me realize like i was this close i was this close to settling for a life that i thought i should because it was comfortable it was easy whatever and i would have been miserable i wouldn't i wouldn't have been happy and now you know fast forward that it's been months not months but it's been a couple weeks maybe like a month um, with those doors being closed, I'm able to really take in appreciation. Appreciation for like, God, you're so funny, but thank you. Thank you for not allowing me to walk into those doors because it would have been the very blockage of what I wanted to be doing, what I needed to be doing. Now, I don't know what my future holds, of course. I don't know where I'm going to be in the next year from now, next two years from now, etc. But I do believe just through getting God's word, just through trusting him and being among some godly people that are really just able to pray with me, encourage me, I do know that my journey is going to be a beautiful journey and i'm going to look back on this video and i'm going to look back on these moments where the doors was closed and i'll have more of course if i can actually like what all happened because 
Um, and I just know it's going to be something beautiful because I was able to really trust in and understand that a door being closed doesn't always have to be a rejection. It doesn't always have to feel like, oh, the world is over. Like, it can just be, okay, that door closed so a better one can be opened. And so, yeah, um, I'm still, like, navigating so much, of course. But I do believe that my time in the Air Force is coming to an end. And I do believe it's because God has something greater in store for me as far as like my career, helping others, really just doing the things I love, like even making YouTube videos, you know. So I'm excited and I hope this video resonated with those that it needed to. Hope that you were encouraged. I'm sorry for those doors closing because I know it can feel devastating, it can feel not the best. But I want you to be in prayer and I want you to be encouraged to know that it does not mean that it was for your worst. It does not mean that it was for your downfall, but instead it was for your blessing. It was for the very thing that you've been praying for to happen. That door had to close so another one bigger, better, greater can open up. And I believe that for myself and I believe that for you. So as always, if no one told you, I love you. I am super proud of you. You're doing enough. And yeah, until next time.